Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Community Voices. I hope everybody's doing well, doing good, feeling great. Um, you know, it is June, and June is also Pride Month. And, you know, as Community Voices, we continue to just support, advocate, um, and just really elevate voices to continue those community missions and those various um, aspects of communities. Just make sure we're constantly working towards our mission to just give back and have an impact um, beyond who we are. So today I'm very excited to um, be sitting with somebody. She is LGBTQ plus advocate, beauty and style enthusiast, creator, none other than Nona Monica. How are you feeling today? How are you doing? Hi, I'm I'm great. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for it. having me. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I want to go ahead and get into things. Um, you know, you have been to the world of beauty for a while. You're very, uh, very familiar with that industry, and I'm very familiar with you. What kind of sparked that interest and passion into the world of beauty for you? And it might be a multitude of things, but what, what kind of sparked it for you? Uh, it's a it's a great question. I was that typical kid that would like get into her mom's like lipstick and blush and just kind of come out looking like a makeup explosion. And I always just loved, you know, cosmetics, but I really just loved the feeling that it gave people and even myself of confidence. Mm -hmm. And that just like stuck with me. And I, I was a dancer for 16 years. So getting my makeup done for dance competitions or dance recitals just made me feel so amazing. And I was like, I really like this. I want to do this for a living. And that's what I, I I did and I was like let's let's go after that which was not the typical norm coming from like a, a immigrant Italian family they're just like what do you mean you don't want to be a doctor or a lawyer and I'm like no I want to be a makeup artist <laughs> so that's that's kind of what sparked it for me that initial feeling of how I felt and I wanted to help others feel like that so even in high school doing my friends makeup like it just brought me so much joy and it filled my cup and it made me radiate happiness. So that's I love that's that because <laughs> to, to, to find that joy early on and to identify it is one thing, but to then find a way to, you know, really make a career and like get involved and like continue finding that way to be involved in your joy in a way that's also pouring back into you, the way that you're pouring into it is really, is really like extremely important. Um, and like such a, a special time too. And you've been, you were in that space and I know you've kind of been in on that space. You were in that space for like 14 years, uh, yes. a, a good chunk of time. Um, I would love to kind of know, you know, the one thing that people kind of, you see creators and, and, and some of the people who inspire us, they run into is they spend so much time in that area that they enjoy and they have to fight that balance between like, do I still enjoy it as I'm like, aging or like you know there's something I want to do that I want to go to a different spot do I want to do something different am I even called to difficult to even be here anymore so when did you kind of know one what kept you in there for that long and then two what was that moment when you were like okay I think I'm going to pivot into this like next part of my career and journey and empower others in a different way yeah it's a great question so I I think what kept me in it for so long was the genuine passion and love for it but also going into a career of makeup and I was given an amazing opportunity when I was in college to work for the company I was at that I love for 14 years and grow that way but for me it was like I still want to make my parents proud and I want to like give them that title or like title that they want and you know your kids doing successful and whatnot so I really tried to climb the corporate ladder mm -hmm. and so the more I climbed that corporate ladder to appease the dreams of others the mm -hmm. further away I fell out of love with what actually made me happy or not fell out of love but distanced me from what made me happy and it was really my, kind of my coming out that was like a shock, like not a shock, but you kind of just look at yourself and you, anal you analyze your life and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm not living authentically at all. And how does that affect me in any way? So that could be career, that could be clothing, that could be how you decorate your home, all of these things. And I took a step back mm -hmm. and I, I said, what am I doing with my passion? I kind of didn't have that flame anymore. So I took a step back from it and I actually stepped away from it for about two and a half years. And I needed that distance to refine myself, re 
you know, get to know me truly, like who am I on so many magnitudes and different levels. And it wasn't until, you know, recently that I had the opportunity to go to a masterclass um, with L'Oreal. And I was like, this is, this is what I'm missing. I'm missing being able to inspire and make other people feel more confident in their own skin. Because mm. yes, beauty, there's external, but it's all skin deep. And there's something about when you're teaching people, you know, oh, how to apply eyeliner. There's also that whole other factor of like, how do we build the confidence from within? And I feel like that played really nicely with my love for content and sharing my authentic voice mm. because showing up authentically as me when I wasn't living authentically is who my platform is. My platform is here's me authentically love me or hate me. I'm me baby. And I love me. And that's what matters. Absolutely. So how do I help other people build that confidence, build that joy, build that love for themselves while also tying in my passion, which is cosmetics. So okay. that's, I took a step back. I looked at the mirror. I looked at the looking glass. And here we are today. I love that. I love that. There's so much uh, like, like good, good, like me to take away from that too. Cause it's that, that stepping away and realizing where the true beauty comes from before it hits yeah. the external surface and things like that. So that, that's, that's inspiring to hear. Cause like I said, people also, like, there is a big thing, especially like on social media and TikTok about climbing the corporate ladder and yes. like, you know, having to rediscover yourself and figure out like, do I want to go up or am I going up because I'm looking for title or am I going up because I'm going to purpose? So I love that you, that, that what you just explained even speaks to that piece. So I, I love that you were able to speak to that and that, that journey, you came out healthy on the other side too. So I love that. Cause you know, one of the next things I actually wanted to men ask was, um, you mentioned, you know, taking that time out to rediscover yourself. I know that, you know, not, I'm not, not creeping on your socials, but you know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know recently you said, yeah, um, I think you posted on Instagram that, you know, you were committing to like, you know, dating yourself, falling in love with yourself like, over again, and just kind of, you know, just learning yourself at this stage in your life. Um, and you mentioned how, you know, you like, like enjoy movies and TVs, and that's kind of always been like a healthy escape for you uh, in, in, a, in a positive way. Do you have any, I know we all have favorite films, but do you have any like personal favorite films or shows that kind of brighten your mood or comfort you or kind of hold like that you hold closer to your heart for my like mine is um the pursuit of happiness like whenever I, I i need to like reset and like just get realigned i'll like watch clips from that movie or watch the movie over if i can it's like a deep movie yes. it's kind of hard to watch sometimes but it does a lot for me to like reset so like, do you have like a movie in that way that you kind of hold close to your heart yeah i think you know dating 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 yourself taking the step back being able to find things that bring you joy, movies and TV. That's, that's always been me again, from mm -hmm. the beginning. It's my love language. And I joke that I like, I'm dating Netflix and cause it's, it's my escape, but there's something about depending on my mood and what I'm going through in my life, I have different movies or mm -hmm. TVs that, that do that for me. So if I really need a good cry, cause it's healthy to cry, Absolutely. It's P.S. I love you. There's something about that movie where I will just cry hysterically. And then I immediately follow it up with Eat, Pray, Love. Um, mm -hmm. So like, that's my duo combo. <laughs> um, but I'm also just a very classic Disney. Like I'm a Disney adult. <laughs> but I, I love, um, yeah, yeah. I genuinely love Moana. I think it's such a, a great story. I love the music. And there's something about also finding yourself within that movie, which kind of just struck, like it just struck a chord in me. And I was like, oh, this is a beautiful movie. So I, I watch that at least once a week. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. I love, I don't think you said Moana in general. I love cartoons and like animation. So like, I'm, my, yes. we literally make my dog watch Bluey and I'll sit there with her and be like, this oh, is an amazing I, show. Like, I've what? heard of that. I need to get my dog. On, I need to get my dog on Bluey. So. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely you should absolutely yeah. but I, I love that I love that um one thing I want to speak to as we keep going to is that um you know we're continuing to do our mission giving back impacting communities and with that being said we'll be donating 10k to the Rainbow Railroad Foundation um you know I love because I love being able just to do that impact because you know all these different organizations have different missions and they have an impact on the community in ways that we don't necessarily get to see it really is the work that's done when those kids go home 
when they're at school, when they're having a hard time. Um, it's it's that's when the work is is working. So uh, just like things like this are just so important because they help continue that work and have that impact beyond um, beyond that. So I would love to kind of just know, you know, can you tell us a little bit more about the organization? And it's kind of like, you know, uh, what they stand for and kind of like, what was your um, decision by, you know, choosing them to work with them to have that impact? Um, I love Rainbow Railroad and they're, so they're a global nonprofit organization and their mission is to help um, at risk 2S LGBTQIA plus people get to safety worldwide. So currently there are 60 countries that criminalize homosexual activities and even more countries that actually discriminate on sexual orientation or gender. So Rainbow Railroad really helps the community of the 2S LGBTQIA+, those people facing persecution based on their sexual orientation, their gender identity and their sexual characteristics, they help bring them to safety. And I think, you know, we're, we're privi privileged to be in Canada. I am privileged to be in Canada and US and there's still a lot of work that needs to be done in these countries alone. Mm -hmm. And when we think of it worldwide, they're really helping people where it's like, you you will be criminalized. You, you could have the death sentence because of who you are. Mm -hmm. So helping them bring these people to, to safety is, is amazing and they're doing such amazing work worldwide so it's it's a great organization i love that i love that how did I, uh can you kind of speak to how it feels well actually let me say it this way you know i think the mission in any way that we can advocate whether it's part of the organization to strengthen the advocation for it or even just the work that we can do in our daily lives is extremely important um i know that and I, i've i've I believe in this myself, and I know you've mentioned this before as well, like how pride is more than just a month. It, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, hey, it's June 1st, turn that, you know, make your profile photo, whatever is what people know it for. But it's really about like, how do we, how are you supporting and advocating throughout the year when it's September, when it's August, when it's November, yeah. when there's a, a a law that needs to uh, be banished or spoken against or passed? Um, yeah. How do you, how do you stand up um, for, for, for those around you and like help empower? So I would love to just kind of know in your experience, what is it like or what has it been like and what is it like to be an advocate and to just kind of constantly kind of keep that fight in you while also enjoying yourself, loving yourself, setting your yeah. boundaries, but knowing, yeah. hey, you know, like I I'm going to speak out and, and, and speak against some of these things, no matter what yeah. the cost is, because that's more important. Absolutely. I think before I, I say how I feel, I think it's important to acknowledge um, and give respect to those that have been advocating and paving the path for the community okay. years before that I have, because um, I wouldn't be able to do this today if it weren't for them. So I think it's, it's so important to pay respect to our elders um, for the work that they've done. Absolutely. And I think also pay respect to companies and organizations like Rainbow Railroad that do global speaking and do a lot of um, things like they do like um, with the UN Refugee Agency, they speak in areas that typically and historically exclude um, the space for queer and trans folk in terms of the refugee piece. So there's a lot of work there and respect that needs to be uh, given. But as for myself, I am someone that is very queer presenting. I, I present more masculine and waking up every single day, I choose to be authentically myself, which is against the grain. And there are days where I wake up to a lot of hate and a lot of uh, unkind messages or, or things like that. But I constantly choose to be authentically me to, to give hope and to give inspiration to other people that feel like they can't do that. And, um, yeah, so for me, it's just, it's, there's going to be obviously your good and bad days, but being able to share my voice, share my story, but also help uplift other voices within the queer community is so, so, so important because you never know who's watching and that might inspire hope in someone else that might give someone that says, Hey, I, I don't think I can be here anymore, but they see someone that's like, wow, like they, that, that could be me. I actually have some hope and inspiration and it's, it's truly, you know, representation 
matter. So it's using my platform to help uplift others, um, but also sharing my own experience, which might help, you know, create change in, in others or make them feel less alone. Um, and I think with you pride, it's not, it's more than just a month. It's more than just a rainbow. It is, it is extended and it's saying, how can we build acceptance for this community outside of just one month? So what does that look like every other month? Are you having, you know, a, a DE and I program within your company? What does your, um, you know, your employees look like? Are there representations of queer, BIPOC, 2S, and no matter what you identify as, do you have that representation within your organization and within your leadership board as well? Yep. And I think, you know, it's also giving back to the community. It's, it's more than just waving a flag. It's saying, hey, there's a lot of queer youth at risk right now. How can we give back to them? Um, and I think what you are all doing is so amazing. Um, so doing things like that. So thank you for, you know, um, doing this outside of just pride and constantly, you know, living up to sharing and amplifying voices because we're going to, we're, we're stronger together Absolutely. and, um, you know, we're stronger together and together we can create change. It takes one person to create just a little path, but that one person creates the path mm -hmm. and the more people come, Oh, that little tiny road is now, you know, a highway with seven lanes. So it, we are stronger together and it takes courage and it takes a tribe of people around you um, to help inspire. I could talk about this all day, but. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. And, Cause you're absolutely right. I mean, it, it, there's just so much, so many gems and so many important things in what you said. I mean, I think speaking to the, the, the piece that, you know, no matter how big or small we see work, cause I don't think necessarily certain work is big or small cause all work is important to the overall function of everything that you're trying to do, whether it's, somebody on ground on flyers, whether it could be a tweet, whether it's, yes. you know, doing the work and gathering people or like marching with, with, your, with your fellow friends and stuff during pride and like supporting them in that way. There are so many different ways and small avenues that have such a big impact because they're all important in the, in the overall piece. Like you said, it, it takes everybody, everybody's yes. not going to have this, doesn't need to have the same job. They just need to do their yeah. part of the yeah. entire piece. So I, I love that you're able to speak to that. And it's the idea of representation and like what are people doing to make sure that there's one inclusion and on mm -hmm. top of that you know diversity and it's on top of that just like how are we also making those people feel comfortable it's one yeah. thing to have somebody in the room but if they don't feel welcomed in the room you know it, it makes it hard for them to want to stay in the room and be in the room and that's like part of their fight already so exactly. I, I love that you were able to just to speak to all those things so I think though I know you said you can speak about those things all day <laughs> I, I love that I love that you can because you do need somebody somebody needs that knowledge and it's unfortunate that people wake up in the morning and yeah. say, I'm going to get hate off and ignorance off. And they say mean things in the DMs or they tweet mean stuff or they just act ignorant. But at the end of the day, you know, it's not about responding and necessarily always like going into the negative energy because that's always going to be there regardless. But sometimes it is about like, hey, I may run into a kid today who's like on the edge yes. and I may say something. I may do something. I may make a piece of content or I may make a tweet that like, switches them back into the other direction and that's what yeah. it's really about at the end of the day yeah. and that balance so i love that you just were able to speak to that it's so important yeah focus on the positivity you know you focus on the positive and from more positive i always say where there's where there's fear there's hate but where there's love there's power right so it's like you just have to focus on that on that love and power and, and, and spread that spread that joy i love that i think that goes that transitions to my last question for you like perfectly um I mean, actually, I think we kind of spoke to it, but I want to make sure I, I, I spread light on it too. Um, and that is just kind of any offering advice that you have or any uh, direction that you could give to people who are looking to become a stronger advocate in the community. Some people, you know, they, they, they do. It's easy as an advocate to do some kind of work, but sometimes you feel like there's certain news that comes out or there's just certain things that you see and you're like, man, I'm not doing enough. How can I do more? What more what more impact can I have? And it's easy to go down the path of feeling like your hope is worthless or your work is worthless and put you down the road of like doing less compared to figuring out what is the one thing that I can do more, the few things that I can do more to have more of an impact. I don't need to be a community leader and like 
and else I want to be, but I can still do work that is impactful and increase it. So what would you have to say is some advice that you can offer or direction that you can give for people who want to become stronger advocates? Yeah, I think um, you don't need to be the loudest person in the room, but you need to speak. And that's, that's it. You know, you don't some, like you were saying, oh, I, I, I don't have a car. I don't want saying one little thing or offering, you know, acceptance to someone within the queer community speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how loud you are. It's all going to be amplified together. Right. So that acceptance is really, you know, key and, and speaking up for those people when they're not in the room Mm -hmm. and saying, Hey, you know what, that's maybe not inclusive or, Hey, maybe we shouldn't do that or, or, you know, things like that. When you're not in the room, have the people are in that room that will speak praises for you, right? And and that's kind of what it means to be an ally. It's more than just saying, yay, gay rights. No, it's, it's speaking when you need to speak. It's standing up for the queer community. It's providing acceptance, it's providing love, it's providing courage and support um, for, for all of the queer community. It's you know, donating if you are in the means to donate as well. If you cannot donate, it's sometimes just, you know, liking or retweeting, like you were saying, or sharing to your story. It could be as simple as sending someone a message and saying, hey, I hope you know that you are so valid in who you are and you are loved and accepted. That can go a long way. That goes a huge way, especially if someone's not feeling like they are accepted. And it could be to a complete stranger. You know, if you see someone down, walking down the street, don't be like, oh, why are they dressed like, hey, give them a compliment, you know, like you don't might not have to like how they're dressed, but you say, I really like your smile. That's great. You know, you find something that will bring positivity to their day. Mm -hmm. um, And that's kind of how you can be a really great, great ally, but speaking, donating, uh, fundraising, if you are able to fundraise, you know, again, we're stronger together and doing it outside of just June. That's key. Um, that. Yeah. And then being there, if you do have, you know, if you are fortunate to be in someone's chosen family, be there, give them the support that they need, hold space for them, listen to what they have to say, you know, hold space, holding space. So key. you don't, it doesn't cost anything to hold space. So exactly. I yeah. love that. I'm not even going to speak on top of that. It's the perfect way to bring everything to a close. Thank you so much. For, uh, for not just joining us and cutting out time, but for just advocating the way that you do, speaking towards the things the way you do, and not being scared and offering that level of transparency to people on the process of loving yourself, being yourself um, in a way that is self-serving, but also inspires and serves others. So just thank you for being that voice and that, and that person. Thank you. And thanks for amplifying my voice. So we're strong together. So thank you so much. Absolutely. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of Community Voices. Until next time, take care. Happy Pride.